Fat is bad for you. I just pop a pill and I'm fine. Meat is murder. <laughs> it's time for bad food punishment. It's time for real nourishment. It's time for the nutrition heretic. The following program is provided as information only and may not be construed as medical or health advice. It is not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure any disease. No action or inaction should be taken solely on the basis of the information provided here. Please consult with a licensed healthcare professional or doctor on any matter relating to your health and well-being. Hello and welcome to The Nutrition Heretic. This is Adrian Hugh, The Nutrition Heretic, and I am here in my home studio with my friend Max. And uh, Max, how are you doing today? Living it right. Living it right. <laughs> We're in, on the sunny big island of Hawaii. Uh, Max, tell them what you do. I run a coffee shop. You just run it? Uh, I own it. And okay. And it owns me sometimes. So... <laughs> <laughs> I bring good coffee to good people. That's yeah, what I yeah. He's uh, he's not Starbucks. So if you're coming to the Big Island, come up to the the lovely town of Waimea and uh, visit us because <laughs> you'll probably <laughs> see me out there trying to get work done. Uh, but yeah, uh, he's got a great staff, uh, and I'm actually really impressed by how you treat your staff. I have to say, I'm impressed how they treat me. Yeah, well, that too, because yeah. I I I just found good people. Yeah, and it took me uh, it took me a couple of years to find decent people so you're you're extremely fortunate my friend yes i am so uh have you been following in the news some of the the naysayers about better health do you know what i'm talking about the no. debunkers, the debunkers uh, i'm not, I'm not talking about health. like all in the family i'm talking about people who are you know they, they don't like anything that sounds remotely natural they they get really weirded out about health protocols that don't involve an injection or a drug and they, their mission in life appears to be, let's make all these people look like assholes. You know, I, I don't hear very much of that, <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I try to live a, a good, clean, healthy life for myself, and mm. I surround myself with the people that feel the same way. Um, but you don't go on social media like I do. Yeah, you're right. They, 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 come, they come out media. swinging on social media, I tell yeah. you. Yeah. They, well, I know that everything is always true until they prove it wrong. Yeah. And, uh, well, and coffee's the, good for you sometimes. Sometimes, then. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, we're actually going to talk about a lot of that kind of stuff today, uh, because we have David Benjamin from HealthyWildAndFree.com, and he's on the line, and we're going to talk to him about a lot of things, but uh, I'm sure at some point we will get into some of these topics of uh, uh, the naysayers, the people who really just get so freaked out that their business perhaps might be in danger or that we're endangering all of society by not s subscribing to what they consider healthy. As we've talked about on previous episodes, the definition of health is not the absence of disease anymore. It seems to be anything goes. Uh, I've known a number of people with life-threatening illnesses tell me that they are perfectly healthy because that's the bill of health they got from the doctor. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really pretty embarrassing. But David Benjamin, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And actually, you're you're our guest heretic. You're not really just any old guest. You're a guest heretic because <laughs> we we uh, we like to talk to heretics, people who are not necessarily taking sides on any particular point, right. uh, but we are not afraid to go out in public and tell people the experiences that we have, even if they don't match up with what the government wants us to say. Yeah, definitely. So uh, tell us a little bit about you and how you got started on this journey. You know, where, when, did, when did you find health? When did I find health? That's a great question. Uh, I found health, uh, interestingly enough, uh, you would think I would have found health earlier uh, when I was younger. Um, how old are you now? <laughs> I, 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 I'm young. I'm young. I'm 26. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, You're closer to my kid's age than you are to mine. Yeah. <laughs> um, you, you would have thought I would have found health at, a, at an earlier age, though, considering uh, what I've seen and experienced in my life. Um, my brother was born with a birth defect because of a pharmaceutical drug that my mom took when she was a teenager uh, called Accutane, which oh. is a drug for, for acne. So my brother was born uh, on his right hand. His middle finger only grew halfway. 
So his whole life, he had to write, type, uh, play basketball, do everything all the other kids did uh, with a half middle finger on his right hand. And his other fingers actually kind of grew inward a little bit. So they're a little bit curved. So I, I saw that growing up. He was my older brother. I'm the second uh, second child in the family. So she basically and, detoxed that stuff into him. Uh, kind of. Yeah. I mean, it was it was something that was still in her body, still in her liver, still in her colon. Uh, and, and uh, interestingly enough, uh, the the pharmaceutical the company the the actual parent company of, of Accutane uh, said you could get pregnant I believe it was within a year or two after you're off Accutane you're safe she got pregnant with my brother five or six years later it was it was double triple as long uh, as the recommended safe amount uh, of time so that that was the first thing I didn't understand that when I was young I didn't understand you know obviously when I was a kid I didn't know what pharmaceutical drugs were I just knew my brother had a different hand and a different finger than myself and my siblings and my friends and everyone else uh and it wasn't until I got a little bit older that I understood it was from a pharmaceutical drug uh when I was uh, a little bit older in middle school my mother and my grandfather were diagnosed with cancer in the same year uh, my, my grandpa was diagnosed, my mom was diagnosed and my grandfather was diagnosed in December of 2001 and he died January 14th, 2002. He was diagnosed, he retired from, from the railroad and he died within three weeks. So I saw, I, and it was liver cancer and I saw him go from, you know, being, you know, quote unquote, you know, once again, quote unquote, healthy, if you will, you know, walking, talking, seeming to be healthy to uh, laying on the couch and dying in a period of three weeks. And his skin turned yellow because it was liver cancer. Uh, and during the same time, my mom had cancer. So I'm watching my grandpa die and, you know, extremely quickly. And then I know my mom has cancer and I'm like, this is just crazy. Like it, to wrap your head around that. I mean, when you're a young, you know, I was 11 years old at the time uh, to see someone die so quickly in front of you and to see him work his entire life on the railroad and die in less than a month and not get to enjoy a day of his retirement or even get to travel really because he really didn't travel at all. He just worked and kind of stayed within the state of Michigan his whole life. It really left an impact on me and, and it, in terms of health, family, work, and then seeing my mom go through that process as well. Uh, I remember my mom just laying on the couch too. I would go to school every day and my mom would be on the couch feeling sick, being in pain, just seeing her deteriorate and wondering if she was going to make it. And I didn't know this until I was older. She told me when we were older that she actually had her casket picked out at one point. Um, she had stage four colon cancer. It spread to the rest and lymphatic system. And, uh, you know, she easily could have died. And if it wasn't for a holistic doctor uh, in Georgia and another guy who created uh, an herb of, of uh, herbs from the Amazon rainforest, if it wasn't for those two people that, that came into her life, uh, I have no doubt in my mind she wouldn't be here today. Those two people literally saved her life and, and helped kind of reformat and restructure things in her life that were killing her, that were causing cancer, the disease to prol proliferate. So uh, at a young age, I, I saw health as something that was really, uh, I, I didn't understand it fully. I didn't understand the drug caused my brother's birth defect. I didn't understand how cancer could take someone else so quickly. I didn't understand why my mom had cancer and my grandpa had cancer at the same time. But I knew that it was important. And there was something, there was a difference between, between my grandfather and my mom. There's a reason why my grandpa died so quickly and why my mom uh, survived and fought it and lived. Uh, and I think part of that reason was my grandfather just didn't have any will to live at the end of his life. He just heard he had cancer and that to him, that was a death diagnosis and he just checked out. Whereas my mom, uh, you know, she had four kids, even though she had her casket picked out, she knew she had something to fight for. So it was, it was like an up and down battle, like I, will to live one day, no will to live the next day. And just kind of an up and down battle. Uh, so from a young age, those things really impacted me. Uh, but it wasn't until actually later on when I was probably 19 or 20 years old uh, that I had my own health journey. So I understood those things. I saw those things firsthand. I lived, you know, in the same household as these experiences and events. Uh, but it wasn't until I was about 19 or 20 years old uh, that I had my own experience. So at that age, I, I was thin. I'm still thin. I've always been thin. I've never had a problem with obesity or anything. But uh, I remember sitting on the couch 
And I had a heart palpitation that like, it felt like my heart stopped for like five seconds. And I was like, whoa, this is not good. This is not normal. Something, something's wrong. And at that point in my life, I had a really bad insomnia. I couldn't sleep for the life of me. I literally would lay awake for hours at night. Uh, and it was mainly due to stress and financial things because I was, you know, just getting into the world on my own. And I was really, uh, really struggling at some points financially and just kind of like trying to work things out for my life. Uh, so the combination of stress, bad dietary choices and no exercise because I thought, hey, I'm thin, so I'm healthy. I don't need to exercise. That's a, that's uh, a big mistake that a lot of people make. And I, I hear it all the time, especially with children. Oh, my kid's fine. It's not obese. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's so far from an accurate indicator of anything to some yeah. extent. And that's just the external too. So you can, you yeah, can be absolutely. thin externally, but you can literally have uh, you can be fat internally. So that's a whole other conversation. Right. <laughs> that's, you know, you, you can't see internally. But but for me, though, it was interesting because I, at that point, I called my mom. My mom, uh, she actually works in the health industry now as a biofeedback technician. Oh, nice. Uh, as, as an electrodermal, uh, and an electrodermal screening. So uh, I called my mom and I said, mom, I don't know what happened. My heart's kind of like skipping beats and I really can't sleep. And I, this, this and that. She's like, all right, drink more water, go for walks and just take a magnesium supplement. Try those three things. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna listen to my mom. You know, mama knows best. Like she always knows best. <laughs> so this is when I started to listen to my mom as an adult. Uh, that journey began. <laughs> uh, so I, I listened to her advice and I started just walking more often because I didn't, I didn't even really walk that much. I, I, I was at home every day. I quit my job at this point. I was trying to get my online venture started and I started walking, taking a magnesium supplement uh, called Natural Calm. Mm-hmm. I just started drinking water and the, the heart palpitations went away completely. And I was like, wow, that was really cool. And it was kind of the first time in my life where I had experienced something that I felt something in my body that scared me and that did scare me where that changed and I felt completely fine after that. So uh, that kind of got me on a journey to health. I, I started with little things. I started eating a salad a day, or I tried to incorporate a salad a day into my diet, uh, being more active, going to the gym, going for walks, uh, just going to the gym and playing basketball, uh, riding my bike, just doing whatever uh, to be active. I just started incorporating more. And then that led to other things. And then my first kind of holistic health venture online is kind of like my first online venture was actually, uh, that's a whole other story. But <laughs> but yeah, so it, it, was, it was kind of seeing my family firsthand that impacted me. And then when I needed my own help and support, I realized that I had an amazing role model, my mother to, to consult with and talk to about this. And she really just kind of like gave me those first few things. And then ever since then, it's just been a journey of learning and education and reading and going to conferences and the list goes on and on and on. So it's a huge passion of mine. And I think uh, if, if you care about your health, it's something that you invest in. It's something that you put time, energy, money, you invest into it. Because if you aren't healthy, you can't enjoy your relationships in life and you can't enjoy all the money you're working for. So I kind of see life as like your finances, your health and your relationships. And I see health as to some degree more important than either the finances and relationships, because if you're not healthy, it's going to be hard to be in a healthy relationship. You know, people say a healthy relationship or a toxic relationship. I've seen those firsthand. So being healthy helps with a healthy relationship, but then also being healthy helps you kind of find your purpose and your mission in life. I know that was the truth for me. When I started to focus on my health, it led me down a path that worked for me. So Absolutely. And and one thing that I always say to people, because uh, the first, what's the word I'm looking for? You know the word I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Let me read your yeah, no, but the, the the first thing that people will say to me when uh when I tell them what they should be eating, you know, throw away the candy or whatever they're they're munching on all day, uh, they complain about the price. And what I have to do is get them in the mindset of understanding that when you feel better, you produce better and you make more money. Totally. I, you know, d- many people are just kind of like sh- shuffling through life not fully coherent 
in, yeah. in, in almost in, in a daze. And <laughs> from some of the some of the experiences I've had trying to hire people, it's you know more than true. <laughs> but but uh, it's uh, it's it's amazing to see when people do start to get into that rhythm of nurturing themselves, how the universe just actually responds and gives you more. Uh, yeah. In some cases, it is because you're not missing work for headaches and all the other stuff that uh, was keeping you out. But totally. also, it's just, I, I said to someone years ago, when you start taking, she, she had boyfriend problems. And I was like, you know, if you start taking care of yourself, you're going to find the right guy. Just don't even worry about him. Let him come find you. You take care of you and the rest will happen. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. She started taking bubble baths every weekend and lighting candles and playing opera and doing all this stuff just to make herself feel better. And we're not even talking food yet. Uh, And uh, not even six months later, she found the right relationship. That's awesome. So um, it makes and that, so much sense too, because self love is a, is kind of the first step in in other people. If you don't love yourself and you don't take care of yourself, how do you expect someone else to do the same? Exactly, right. it all starts from the thing. Well, so. but, and and that's that's an important point that you bring up as well, because every generation up until what 1950s maybe took their health seriously there was someone who prepared meals and prepared them with love and took time and it was understood to be a, a natural part of life that's it's, it's mm-hmm. something that is just done and there was no question about it and uh, slick marketing has taught us that we don't need to spend time in the kitchen and we don't need to <laughs> slave over the stove when you can either right. eat out or microwave it or you know get this handy dandy thing in a box it's we we've relinquished all control over our bodies and our health to corporations yeah and as much as people love to say they hate corporations they love their comfort foods they are yeah. I, I shouldn't even call i shouldn't even call it comfort food because i love comfort food too but like if i'm gonna eat mac and cheese it's gonna be the best damn mac and cheese yeah. you can imagine. <laughs> i have i have kids who who their parents would say oh my kid would never touch that you know they, they only like the stuff that comes out of the box and then i it's thanksgiving or whatever and i make my awesome mac and cheese and their kid is just devouring it they're like it's the yeah, I was You're actually like, thinking of writing a cookbook see. called The Best Ever because I, I get that a lot. I, get, I make the pe- best pancakes ever. I make the best popcorn ever. <laughs> I make the best mac and cheese ever. I make the best leg of lamb. I mean, I've got, I've gotten kids to eat things that they would never have eaten in their parents' house because I freaking make it taste good. <laughs> that's not hard. And it does. And that's the thing, too. That's another misconception. I think people think, oh, healthy food doesn't taste good. It's completely ludicrous, and 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 it's it's this it's this idea that if something is healthy, it has to be uh, really crunchy and have like have like that carrot, you know, or whatever that yeah, the dry, it, yeah, that that tasteless, dry, like, like, no salt, not, tasty, not <laughs> spicy, no seasoning, no salt, no sweet, no like you know in Ayurveda, there's like sweet, sour, bitter, salty, right, and all exactly. that, all those different flavor p- profiles. It, people have this perception that healthy food is just bland, dry, crunchy, you know, whatever it may be. And, and in all fairness, I'm, I'm much older than you, but in all fairness, it used to be that way. Yeah. I can and totally it, see that, but now it's everything tasted like hell. cardboard. Oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> like every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have actually had some of my meals referred to as sex on a plate. <laughs> uh, so. I'm coming to Hawaii ASAP because I need to get some uh, food. Max hasn't had it yet, but I have an awesome uh, Spanish. Uh, spinach tortilla uh Ooh. like a omelet uh, that i learned to make in spain and um yeah just i make stuff like that all the time and people are like is this good for me i'm afraid it's got fat in it and i'm like shut the fuck up <laughs> eat it you gotta have it to burn just it, eat it and be healthy all right? exactly just eat it and love it you know but my <laughs> my book frenching your food is all about the fact that we no longer trust food and we treat our food like a bad relationship yeah, it's yeah. just it's, we've just got this really horrific relationship with food and we are ready to to hand over real food to anybody else who will um anyone who tells us that it's bad for us we're right. willing to just say oh i can't eat beef i can't eat kale i can't eat this because i heard it on the news and it's bad for me and so i really shouldn't do it uh but when it comes right down to it if you don't eat that what are you eating right 
because for all intents and purposes, Twinkies or whatever the heck was Skittles. I don't know. But a lot of the stuff people, th- th- it just kind of gets a free pass. They don't, they don't tell you on the news at night. They don't tell you stop eating Skittles. Cause it's got, you know, red dye number 40 or, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but messing up your brain. And, and right. Uh, they won't tell you any of that stuff, but you know, yeah. well, Oh, it's so crazy to suggest that, that omega threes and grass fed beef is better than conventional beef. You know, that's, that's wacky. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, yeah. That's just well, crazy it's, talk. It's, it's a generational thing, too, because I, I remember uh, trying to tell my grandma. My grandma actually died of cancer as well. I remember trying to kind of communicate with her uh, how, what food is healthy and what food isn't, quote unquote. Uh, so, you know, for example, you know, butter or, or you know, meat or anything like that. There's the obviously the traditional GMO fed, hormone right. pumped animal. And then, you know, now there's obviously getting back to the land, back to the, the organic version of that. So when it comes down to food, it's just all about quality. And I think people often forget that. And they, you know, the whole the news is a, it's a fear sales pitch. So let's all get afraid of this or that and, and throw that out of our diet. But that can also be dangerous because what's interesting and I've noticed this even in the health world and, and the, you know, people that are, you know, into healthy living and healthy eating, I, I can be dangerous for, for them as well, because what some people start to do, and I've done this in my life, is start to take foods out of your diet because it's not healthy or it has anti-nutrients or uh, goitrogens, goitrogens, it's a tough <laughs> word to say, uh, or whatever it may be, because uh, you know, this, this food has this or that, or today I saw something online. Uh, Tom Brady doesn't eat tomatoes and peppers because they can be inflammatory. And I'm looking, I'm re- I'm like <laughs> tomatoes and peppers. I'm like, but, but he also eats these different grains like quinoa. I'm like, these things, these things can be inflammatory too. So right. it, it like in, in terms of whole foods, like people can even get picky and specific about whole foods. Whereas for me, I think in my perspective, strategically, at least, it's smarter to be strategic and say, okay, I will include more foods in my diet, diet, get more of a range. And at least I'm getting those phytonutrients or antioxidants or, you know, trace minerals or whatever it may be from those plants along with the anti-nutrient or whatever it may be. But I'm still getting those things in my diet. Whereas instead of, you know, starting to take things out of your diet and I don't know, I don't know if I can talk about, can I talk about vegans on this show? (laughs) Is What's there a, is there a show where we haven't talked about <laughs> vegans? Is the next question. <laughs> okay, because uh, I've I've gone vegan for periods of my life, right. uh, a few times. Vegan, vegetarian. I've just I've tried everything. I'm like a human guinea pig. I've uh, my weight has uh, fluctuated. 20, 25 pounds, and I, I can do that. Mine has too, but for the wrong <laughs> reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I've literally, like, I can fluctuate my weight, like, I'm, you know, I don't know. It's, it's because it's literally easy, and I have a really good, like, balance right now. But uh, what's interesting is that when I went vegan in my life, I started losing a lot of weight. I got really skinny and I felt weak. And a lot of people are like, vegan, you know, vegan diet is the best. And, uh, and for some people, it may work. I'm not saying it doesn't work for some people. If it does, great. You're, you're, you're making the planet a, a greener place because you're not eating meat, apparently. I don't really know if that's true. That's a long story. <laughs> oh, oh, that's, we can go on and too. on, David. <laughs> we can go that's, on. That's debatable too, because I don't even know if that's true. But if you're, you know, if that works for you, great. But I, this whole diet propaganda, I, I even pay, like, I think paleo is, is probably has the most validity overall. If I were to quote unquote choose a diet, thank you. Like, I say the same thing, <laughs> even though yeah. I'm not paleo and I don't necessarily right. support me labeling either. the diet. You know, it's, exactly. it's, it's, it's to me, it's all about the label. Once you slap that label on it, you got to adhere to the cult. You yeah, know, and and, and right. that 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 just, just kind of solidifies it. So it's like I'm Catholic and I'm paleo, or, <laughs> or I'm Jewish and I'm vegan. You know, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's a great, that's, yeah, exactly. So it has its uh, limitations. And then once you're kind of in that channel and in that dietary cult or, you know, whatever, it, it can harm you long term. So what I've noticed too, with my mom, you know, working as a biofeedback te- technician, working with clients one on one, or people that she works with that work with clients one on one, what she's found is that people who are vegan or vegetarian for a period of time, you know, two, three, four, five years, whatever it may be, they typically have deficiencies and they have to start incorporating at least eggs or something back into their diet because they've gone for too long and they have B12 or, you know, iron or zinc or whatever it may be deficiencies because they don't have meat or dairy or whatever product, uh, you know, not products, but foods uh, in their diet. So, I mean, it's different for everyone. And then at the same time, 
there's uh, the gut responds differently. So then genes play a role. So uh, I'm Irish, Lithuanian, German, French, and Polish. So I like potatoes. Uh, a good portion of my genes are Irish. I think that has something to do with it. <laughs> and I think potatoes genetically work in my gut because my ancestors ate potatoes and, you know, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of guidelines you can adhere to. You know, some people say it's, you know, about your blood type and some people say it's about your genes. Some people say it's about this or that or like one of my friends uh, and I really like the work that she does. Uh, she has kind of a test that she does for each individual and they test the foods they're eating to see if their gut, their immune system kind of responds to it. How are they testing energetically? Uh, no, through, so basically what they, what she has people do is they eat a food and they actually uh, will weigh themselves within, I think it's a 24 hour period. And if they have inflammation or bloating in their belly and their gut, uh, that food causes an inflammatory response in their body. And over time, that inflammatory response, if you keep stacking inflammatory foods on top of each other, because in, some foods are more pro uh, inflammatory across the board. So most people are going to be, you know, uh, have inflammation in the gut from, you know, certain foods, but some foods, some whole foods, even for some people, uh, may cause inflammation in the gut. And, and that may be only for a smaller segment, say 20% of the population, let's say. Uh, so what she does is she has, uh, it's kind of like a protocol. They eat the food and if there's inflammation in the gut, uh, and you gain, I think it's a half pound to a pound and a half, uh, within a 24 hour period from that, that food probably isn't a good food to, to eat often and to, to kind of be a consistent food because we all have our habits too. Right? Yeah, so for sure. If we like something like, you know, we kind of will eat that a couple times a week or even daily, you know, like I eat dark chocolate pretty much daily. <laughs> uh, so, you know, there, now I know, now I know the way straight to your heart. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And chocolate is a way to my heart. So, <laughs> Uh, just letting everyone know. And I am single. Recently. Oh, yes, yes, uh, yes. Let's not forget. <laughs> <laughs> everyone should know that out there. Uh, All right. So, and you said Michigan? Michigan. All right. Detroit, <laughs> Detroit area. But I but I do travel <laughs> for special occasions and whatnot. Okay. Uh, okay, ladies. Uh, you you do swing that way, right? Just, ladies. Just a shout out. Just, <laughs> Are we we're talking like about women or men? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Just women. Okay. Okay, Sorry, ladies. Man. So sorry, sorry, dudes, but uh, <laughs> I saw I saw a little spark in Max's eye hey. here. But <laughs> Thanks for um, clarifying. It just saves me some time a little bit. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so okay. So you hear that? Uh, I'm taking numbers. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody wants to write the help desk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, what was I talking about? Diet. Yeah, yeah. diet and health and, and whatnot. Uh, so, so, so they're weighing themselves half a pound. Exactly. Yeah. So I think it was, I want to say it was a half a pound to a pound, pound and a half. And uh, basically just testing those foods to figure out what foods work for you and what foods don't. Nice. And, and, and it just makes a lot of sense to, I mean, in terms of food and diet, paleo, vegan, you know, pescatarian, fruitarian, all this stuff is, some of them are more, you know, same. Some of them are a little far out and, and fringe, if you will. But at the end of the day, the perfect diet, the absolute perfectly healthy diet is completely different for everyone 100% yeah. of the time. So right. I, I think that's like the biggest thing that needs like not enough people are talking about. Everyone's promoting their diet or yeah. their diet book or whatever the hell they have to sell. And I'm like, everyone, let's just stop and realize everything is different for everyone based on genes, based on the foods you react to, based on your environmental factors. Maybe you have something in your environment or your body that interacts with the food and, and or you're lacking or it's just, you know, you have nutritional deficiencies and you're lacking digestive enzymes, prebiotics, probiotics, minerals or whatever it may be, uh, fiber, you know, soluble and soluble, whatever it may be to break down the food. So uh, eating healthy is a great start, but trying to find that perfect diet it's kind of a waste of time, but do it in a way that doesn't follow one book or one quote unquote guru. Absolutely. That's the advice I can give. On well, that. I, I come from the school of Chinese dietetics. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing that it brings to us is getting rid of this whole concept of good and bad food. 
Because right. I, I'm sure you constantly get asked, is this a good food for me or a bad food for me? I don't know. Eat it and you tell me. <laughs> I can't tell you that. But it's going to, to it. <laughs> right, exactly. And, and, but also it's going to depend not only on you as an individual, but the climate that you're in, uh, exactly. what time of year it is, what time of day it is sometimes, uh, yeah. you know, hot, dry, uh, moistening, you know, what, what are we going after and what's, right. what's right for you at this moment in time hmm. eating local is is a is a great way of exploring that and figuring out well hmm apples grow in the winter maybe i should eat some freaking apples you know like what <laughs> you yeah. know there's there's uh there, there's there's clues from nature as mm -hmm. to what we should be eating but uh, i think in a society where everything's shipped in and we have access to everything you know a hundred years ago i have a friend her grandmother when she was <clears> growing up a hundred years ago would get an orange for Christmas. She lived in New York. Mm -hmm. That was her whole Christmas gift was an orange because oranges were that hard to get in New York. That's crazy. A hundred years ago. Yeah. So, I mean, just putting that into perspective as you could just, I could go anywhere on this Island and buy uh, oranges that were shipped in, even though we have oranges growing here, but right. it just goes to show how much stuff gets shipped all over the place right. that shouldn't yeah. necessarily be there. I mean, it's right. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and yeah, that's another good point. I remember the first time I came back and, and where I, when I go to Costa Rica, I actually stay, the city that I stay in is in the Nicoya Peninsula, which is a blue zone. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with the blue zones? Mm -hmm. uh, I was, I was going to bring that up. Okay. We'll talk about blue zones in a bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> go okay. on. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, the town I stay in, the city is actually, it's in a blue zone in the, in the Nicoya Peninsula, the, that blue zone uh, in, in Costa Rica. Okay. Uh, so people, you know, regularly live to 100 plus years old there uh, not in that specific town but in that region right uh, it's because the town I stay in is kind of a half tourist half local town but uh, it was interesting I remember the first time I came back to Michigan uh, or maybe the second time I forget I came back to Michigan I had a banana the first banana I had and I, I took the first bite and I was like what the hell is like what the hell is this flavor and I started chewing and I like stopped and I was like this is cardboard like I literally could taste. I don't. I don't know what cardboard tastes like, but now I do because I could literally. It was <laughs> good point. Well played, sir. <laughs> uh, it literally had like a cardboard banana. It tasted. It had the banana essence, but it but it had a cardboard <laughs> flavor, and I was like, "This is not normal." And and to ship foods in, you know, to eat locally, obviously, is healthier because you're eating local to your environment. You know, they pick it prematurely, so you're not even getting the full nutritional season, uh, nutritional value in the food before it's shipped in. Not to mention the shipping process. Who knows how, what goes on there? You know, once yeah. again, with the bananas, I think there, there must be some sort of fumes or off-gassing from the cardboard that the banana peels, I would imagine, soak up or whatever. Uh, so, it's just interesting, like eating locally and, and that's a huge thing. Seasonally, like you said. Uh, another thing in, in India and in Ayurveda is the dosha. So, eating yeah. according to your dosha. Like I... I'm the, uh, what is it? What's the, the fire one? The, is that Vata? Pitta? I don't know. Pitta. <laughs> I don't know. I'm making this up. Yes. Yeah. It's either Vata or Pitta. You're right. It's one of those. It's not, uh, Kepha, I think is the third one. Yes. Yeah, it's like not that. that one. Uh, so I guess I'm the fire one, Vata, Pitta, one of those. Maybe that's that's a, cause you're so skinny. That, that, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Apparently. That's, yeah. No, it did. Cause, uh, Chinese medicine is based on Ayurveda and yeah, your skinny people yeah. are the fire. Yeah, yeah, there's crossover there. Yeah, you're right. Uh, but so, so my friend who's a yoga teacher said I shouldn't be eating uh, hot foods. Mm -hmm. spicy foods. Yeah, I love, push you past that. Yeah, yeah, I love hot and spicy foods. So, but for me, it it, it just adds. It doesn't balance or create harmony for me. <laughs> so it's kind of like I'm like so it's hungry. like an addiction. I'm like hot sauce, like you know, uh, cayenne, garlic, jalapeno. You know, I'm just. I'm not saying it's not healthy, but at the same time, it's good for me to have like cucumbers and watermelon and cooling foods to help, uh, you know, my internal balance, if you will. Uh, so. David, I'll have to send you some of my cock rope. It's my Jamaican jerk cock rub. Yes. Ooh, I, that sounds really good. Yes. I, I was making it and selling it at the markets here. It was big hit. That's awesome. I love No pun that. intended. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> or or pun intended, depending on the situation. But oh, I'm very punny. <laughs> very punny over here. Uh, I love Jamaican food. I love I love jerk chicken. I love I love curry. I love all that. So I'm sure I'd enjoy it. Okay. All right. I'll, send it over. I'll send it over. You 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 be the judge. I, I'll try it out. My kitchen will have your cock rub. <laughs> 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 the innuendo never stops around here. Uh, so. Just keep it going. Humans is the best medicine. Hey, it, it, it really is. <laughs> it, it really is. And, you know, that's that's one of the reasons why I like doing this podcast, because uh, I think a lot of the other podcasts about health are, are take it a little too seriously. And like you said, they, they follow whatever the prescription of the guru du jour is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, this is I just like this to be a much more friendly, down to earth place where we can explore these these issues and talk about it you need to have some more fruitarians on your show then because they are funny as hell <laughs> <laughs> i just watch them and i'm like wow really what eight no yeah we, we, it's pretty fruity it, it gets pretty fruity <laughs> in that environment real fast <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's you know they mean well. That's the thing is that people mean well, and I, I don't want to razz on them for for trying. Uh, yeah, well, but it, there fruit is, is fruit is better than Fruit Loops. Yeah, <laughs> I suppose. But at the end of the day, like, can we can we can we not be so cult culty cult like with our beliefs? Right. Right. We're all we're all we're all trying to help the world live healthier, but I've seen some things where I'm just like, whoa, that's whew. yeah. Uh, well, you know. again, that comes that's that's what happens when you try to fulfill someone else's ideology for you instead of your own. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, finding your own path and and really listening to your own body. Uh, there's just we like uh, it's. You know, it's the opposite side of the same coin that we talked about before, uh, which is that people are looking for an outer entity to tell them what's right. So that could be the government and it could be your neighbor. Yeah. It all plays right back into that food pyramid nonsense. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing that, I, that I've noticed. You, all, all, all the excuses about, you know, saturated fat, this. Oh, they're, they keep saying they changed it. They put steps on the side of the pyramid. That ain't a real change. Whoever <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, funded the change for the food pyramid, they, they changed it. They just put a little money into their category and it, and it plucked up higher or low. What is it? Low? I don't even lower. Yeah. Lower is the majority. So they, <laughs> whoever funded the food pyramid, their, whatever industry, dairy, meat, whatever, grains, their funding altered the food pyramid uh, uh, change, basically. That's how it works. Right. Statistically, if you look yeah. back. So. so what do you think about something like universal health care? Is it a good thing? Is it a scary thing? Because I've got my own opinions, but I'd like to know what you think, especially someone who likes to take his health into his own hands. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, you're saying from like a uh, from a, a from the people perspective, just whatever perspective you want. I mean, what, like as a as a concept, what do you as think? A concept. You know, what what do you see as the as the the uh, the benefits and the potential pitfalls? How's that? Uh, that's a good question. I think I think there could be benefits if the world of health and healthcare was more seamlessly integrated through technology. I think right now. Uh, allopathic, uh, you know, healthcare and medicine, uh, is connected really well. And that's actually kind of one of the missions in my life is to connect the holistic world a lot stronger so that it can be, uh, more influential and, in, and in health and healthcare at large. But because allopathic medicine, doctors, doctor visits, pharmaceutical drugs, surgery, the traditional way of, of treating patients is so, is so mainstream. I think it's, it, it it doesn't really have a lot of potential to actually help people day to day be healthy, prevent disease and, you know, cure disease, which is the ultimate goal. Uh, so I think I think it could work maybe one day. But I think the world at large, the government, politics, yeah, all of that would need to change a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot of like reform and, and a lot of people that are, are you know, lobbyists, bitches, for lack of a better word. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Would, would need to uh, be, you know, exposed and, and thrown out of wherever or whatever position they hold because, because there's, too much, there's too much influence. There's too much money. There's too much uh, power, corruption, and money that, that funds healthcare. And uh, that's not going to stop until people become aware. And part of what I'm doing in, the, in my work online, not just with my website, but 
once again, my long term vision is to really connect people uh, who ha- take a dietary approach, take a nutritional approach. Uh, and not only that, but also integrate other aspects of health. So emotional health and well being, stress, uh, physical fitness and exercise, you know, all the, you know, environmental factors, pollutants, uh, toxins, uh, chemicals in the home, chemicals. Uh, in paint, furniture, clothing, the list goes on and on. And on. There's chemicals everywhere. There's way, 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 way too many chemicals. So uh, really just bringing all of that kind of what's what's now new information that's kind of getting around online and getting into these health documentaries and books, uh, getting that mainstream. So it's on CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, you know, uh, all these big blogs and, and whatever. Getting that mainstream, I think that's when the shift will occur, but it, it has to take a, a group of people online to keep talking about this, keep preaching, quote unquote, you know, reach, preach, teach, if you will, <laughs> the, the, the levels of, of uh, conversion or whatever, to help people and, and the public understand the bigger picture. Because right now, the bigger picture of health uh, is not fully understood by the public. No, no, no. no. If, yeah, if you walked on the street and you ask people, do you know what GMOs are? Do you know what Monsanto is? Thankfully, more people are understanding that day by day. But there's so many things working against people, especially in, in first world countries. Interestingly enough, I would love to talk about uh, the differences between first and third world health and, and uh, dive stories and lots of interesting perspectives on that. But the fir- in the first world country, you know, America that, that we live in, uh, the environmental factors, the pollutants, you know, the water, the the tap water, the and any even even if we're not going quote unquote conspiracy here and talking about fluoride in the water, which right. you know, I believe is in the water. Even if you don't believe it's in the water, chlorine is in the water. You can taste it and you can feel it. Uh, you can test it. Uh, you can you can send any independent person can take their water and send it into a lab to get it tested. Uh, chlorine's in the water. You can smell it. In certain areas, you can smell it more so than other areas, depending on the water municipality. Uh, but chlorine is corrosive. Right. Chlorine, chlorine on your skin, on your hair, it's corrosive. Whatever you get on your skin gets in your body. So there's so many environmental factors working against people uh, that they have to take so many little steps here and there in their home, uh, you know, uh, in their life in general, what they eat, what they do, uh, you know, once again, how they think, stress, emotions, that universal healthcare reform will take a big shift uh, that I believe will start online and through social media and then sure. eventually that will reach kind of bigger names. Like for example, look at uh, Jessica Alba, you know, with her brand, uh, Honest. Yeah. Honest um, you know, people like that, those, those are kind of tipping point people, if you will, that are going to create the bigger shift. And, and even though Tom Brady, I was kind of hating on him earlier, but even <sighs> though he doesn't eat tomatoes and peppers, he still eats a whole food diet. He uses right. olive oil, Himalayan salt. He doesn't eat sugar and MSG and all that crap. So there's people that are starting to kind of, even if they're not talking about it, the word is getting out that they're eating healthy and that they're doing this different and this, this and that. So I think, I think those things are going to be. And he may have some joint difficulties why he needs to avoid those foods that were was not reported on. That's possible. That's true too. Because I've, I've been quoted numerous times in the press and they always leave something crucial out. <laughs> right. <laughs> so right. <laughs> to, you know, something, um, uh, about the story. The, the one thing that scares me about universal health care is the possibility that once we have it, it's going to be, oh, well, now that we gave you health care, you've got to get this done and we're going to make you take oh, this yeah. test and we're going to make you shoot your kids with that and you're going <laughs> to take it or else yeah. you're not going to get anything. Uh, you know, you're not going to. Yeah. So yeah. that that's the stuff that yeah. scares me the most. Is that something that exists now? Uh, places Just with universal health care? Um, actually, Australia passed a law that, uh, I'm trying to remember, I think it was last year, they passed some kind of law that if your kids don't get whatever kind of vaccine, they can't participate, you don't get like a wow. child tax credit or something mm. like that. Well, well they, they have that now, I think, in, in California, didn't they pass? Uh, well, yeah, they, they passed that uh, that law in California, which is why I'm here. But yeah, they uh, passed a law, but I don't know, other than going to school, I'm not sure what other things they've pulled from those families. What is the law? Uh, that your kid has to get minimum 10 vaccines, I think it was, off the bat. And uh, if they don't get them, they cannot go to school. What? And, yeah, uh, because they're infecting. You know, kids are vectors of disease, if you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's... that's uh, you know, they, they ignore the fact that the kids, uh, that, that you know, that most 
diseases spread from vaccinated children who have not been quarantined. When I was a kid, back in the old days, when I got a vaccine, I had to stay home for a week after I got a vaccine. Yeah. You know, they don't do that anymore. They just, they, they're, they're just like, good to see you now get the hell out and they just stick you out in public and you know you're you're a walking virus Mm. well i just i just don't get it because if the vaccine worked why would why would parents be so worried about the herd immunity it's more like herd mentality Mm -hmm. uh it's it's, yeah it's just so ridiculous so ridiculous and it's funny because uh, some of the people you probably know some of these people they'll, they'll post stuff on on social media and really just with like the death threats for people like you and me who are questioning because we've yeah. had experiences you with your brother me with a bunch of people who work for me friends uh children who have died children who uh were autistic the day after uh mm-hmm. i mean just r- ridiculous stuff that's going on and th- it's like they just cover their ears and they don't want to hear it and i worked in big pharma so i know firsthand that these companies are not benevolent you know they're not doing this for anybody except themselves i had a trainer who told me point blank we don't really care whether or not it works we just want to make sure the doctors uses it Mm -hmm. so when i so when i would do my job i would actually talk to the doctor and be like hey doc anybody ever show you the contraindications for this thing look what could happen to your patients (laughs) (laughs) doctor do you know that he's like i I had someone in the office from your company today they didn't say it i'm like yeah they won't tell you but i will so yeah. actually, I got a, I got a, I got a, in the uh, good graces of a lot of doctors by telling them the contraindications, be- and that was my whole spiel. Like that, that's yeah. that's all I would ever talk about because, and I'd be like, yeah. So what are you prescribing next? That was my one thing I had to say is, what are you going to prescribe next time you have somebody come in with arthritis? I would caution them because yeah. we need to proceed with caution. And, you know, <laughs> good good science does not decide on an outcome and then try to make everything retrofit that outcome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's exactly what these people who who claim to love science and claim to actually they're actually using science as a verb now. Have you noticed that to science? Uh, <laughs> and uh, a lot of these, yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and a lot of these these people they claim to love science. First of all, not one of them is a science has a science background. Yeah, is, is, is that's the first they thing. They just read about it on the internet. They read about it on the internet, but I can't believe anything I read on the internet. But they can, you know. So, uh, and and it's like they're hell bent on trying to debunk anything that stands in the way of corporations making money. And I just laugh my ass off because most of these people aren't even healthy. I, yeah, at, no, they, they least, are. I, I have at least story. half of them are alcoholics or drug addicts. And I know yeah. that because they post what they drink for breakfast. And they're like, <laughs> I had peanut butter and a quart of vodka. <laughs> it's a balanced meal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I used to argue. I was in this uh, business incubator program. I used to argue with this guy who's really science minded. And it was funny because the class, it was, it was a business class, but the class we were in, he was very science minded and very, uh, you know, we would argue the whole class. He's like, no, you're wrong, this and that. And, uh, we became friends with a weird friendship because we would always argue. I mean, it'd always be like a debating type friendship. Right. Uh, so, uh, I, hey, I remember- if it's friendly and done in, in the right, yeah, yeah, that, so that both of you can learn, that's cool. That's, yeah. I have no problem with it, that. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. And, uh, one day I was hanging out with him and he, uh, he made pizza rolls, Totina's pizza rolls. Mm. And I, 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 remember, <laughs> I, remember, I remember just kind of thinking, I was like, I was like, there is no hope here. <laughs> like, I'm just like, I just need to quit. I just, I just need to, you know, realize that he'll come to his own conclusion and, and whatever. So now it, it's funny when I, whenever some, I, and I do, I get a lot of, uh, like, for example, and, and this, I, I can talk about real briefly and it still sounds kind of far out to a lot of holistic health people. I wrote an article about, uh, putting cut up onions in your socks while you sleep. Now, before you laugh, because it is funny. I think I read that. <laughs> Yeah, probably did. It, it actually it went kind of it went kind of viral, and, and a lot of other websites picked it up. It was in somewhere in Europe, I want to say I forget. And there actually may have been a few cultures, but somewhere in Europe, uh, back in like the 1800s, they used to cut up onions uh, and put it just in the room, and like on a bedstand, for example, uh, if someone had the cough or flu mm-hmm. or they're getting sick because that onion purified the air and it helped breathing and, and the uh, the nose and, and uh, lungs and things like that. So it's, it's a very, it's a really old uh, home remedy. Uh, the thing with putting anything on your skin, once again, and this is something that's huge that people tend to forget, anything, anything that you put on your skin 
uh, can be absorbed into your body. It doesn't mean 100% of it will be. And interestingly enough, uh, the the genital region and the armpits, up to 100% of what is a, is topically applied in those areas, uh, it can be absorbed into the body, whereas other parts of the body, uh, it's, it's less than 100%. So it could be 70, 50%, whatever, uh, which is interesting. I don't, I don't know why that is. Well, I, there's reasons for genital region, but armpits, I have no idea. Um, but anyway, uh, a little tangent. Uh, but as far as onions, so with onions, putting onions, so if you put like, if you cut up an onion and you put it on your skin topically, uh, onions contain sulfur. Mm-hmm. It's a mineral. We all know about sulfur. It's good for your hair, your skin, your nails, ligaments, joints, tendons, things like that. Uh, good for building tissue. Uh, so that sulfur uh, in the onion, once it sits on your skin, it, your your skin absorbs that sulfur and it gets into your bloodstream. So I highly recommend anyone try this just as an experiment to go a little far out there and try this out. Cut up onions, slices, put one in each foot, touching the bottom of your feet mm-hmm. and put your socks on and go to bed. When you're laying down, uh, and this is what I experienced at least, and I've, other people have said the same, the your legs will start tingling. The blood flow and circulation in your legs will literally start to tingle. And that sulfur is purifying the blood and it's getting into your bloodstream. So it's literally purifying your blood and, and it's also beneficial for, once again, uh, cough, cold, flu, things like that. Uh, so I wrote about this and it went viral and then other sites picked it up and I got all the, and I made a video about it and I got all these people saying like, there is no science behind this, this is and that. And I'm like, well, there's sulfur and onions. You can Google that yourself. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not rocket science. It's basic science. Uh, there's yeah, sulfur and onions. And what you put on your skin, uh, it will be absorbed to some degree in your bloodstream and you'll actually feel it. Especially like, through the feet. Yeah, especially through the feet as well. So, or, or what, once again, you put on your genitals or armpits. Yeah, I'm not putting that on my genitals. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> that might be <laughs> won't do it. I can just see stuff like <laughs> that's even too kinky for me. <laughs> <laughs> I could just like someone like listening to this, like, ah, oh, I should try that for my next next yeast infection. Like, Although garlic, that, garlic is often used by for yeast infections. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if that would burn or not. I feel like it might. I don't know. It's hard to say. I think but the yeast it infection might, already might. burns. Yeah, I don't know. So good luck to just anyone. like just like fighting fire with fire. <laughs> yeah, they kind of did. Uh, it, I'm sure it'd work. It'd just be a very brute force approach. But yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> good luck to anyone that tries it if they do. Uh, uh, but, oh yeah, don't try this at home, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah, legal, legal a disclaimer. disclaimer. <laughs> yeah, we'll, good, we'll have good. one of those. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But yeah, so I recommend anyone try that out just to experience that and, 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 uh, and to see if, if you, if, you know, you feel the tingliness in, in your, in your legs and your feet and in your calves and things like that. But, um, but there's, there's a lot of far, what would sound like far out things, but that, that may sound far out to someone, but it's really, in fact, very, very simple. You know, a lot of things were used years ago, uh, very basic things, whether it's like, you know, maybe like vinegar or honey or apple cider vinegar or salt or baking soda. Or You know, it you sounds know. really far out is shooting a virus into my, my uh, skin, <laughs> into, into my bloodstream. To me, that's far out. Yeah, that's far out to me, too. I'm just it, saying, it, you know, like, because people, they, they get all bent out of shape, like you said, over something like this. And you know, there's no science behind it. Blah, 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 blah. And <laughs> it turns out that, you know, really? Is, are you really going to entertain this? You, you really want to go there with, with me <laughs> on yeah, this topic? You really want to go there with, with, yeah, putting a, vi- yeah, I don't, I don't understand that. Yeah, I, I, I'll take the, I, I'll take the less invasive approach first. Well, yeah, less invasive and less risky. Right. I mean, if, if there's nothing, it's not like, it's not like you're laying in the road half with your blood you know just seeping out of here or something yeah. and you need a you really need to get to the emergency room that's different right. but a lot right. of the stuff that people uh will gravitate towards the uh, pharmaceutical let's call solution first or the surgery or vaccination or whatever yeah, yeah it's uh it, it, it can it, it's extreme it's extreme exactly it's, it's, it's very extreme ex- exactly it's absolutely nuts and what, what's interesting to, to me too just a, a one point on vaccinations what I don't understand is so a vaccination is a dead, it's an inactive dead version form of that virus. So what I don't get, and this is the theory behind it, is that inactive form of the virus is going to engage, you know, quote unquote, the immune system of the recipient in order to fight that virus off. The misunderstanding or the the 
The thing I would love to have anyone who really understands vaccines scientifically and they know what they're actually talking about, if someone could please explain this to me. If someone has a weak immune system and their white blood cell count is already low, uh, their immune system does not adapt well to anything. They already get the flu and cold and, and, and their immune system is already weak. Right. How in the hell does putting a dead and active form of a virus, which is basically just sludge into their body to try to say, hey, immune system, wake up. You have more work to do. We know you can't handle the load you're already taking, but here's some more shit to handle. Right. Please start working. It makes no logical sense. <sighs> yeah. And well, you know that you know that when sense. vaccines first came on the market, that it, they were specifically told not to give it to children, the elderly and the infirm. I did not know that. Yes, That's that was that was it was the I personally believe that it was a form of biological warfare. Yeah. Uh, because they would give it to soldiers mm -hmm. and then they send them over to the enemy. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so, very, so very um, you know, there's, there's, there's a reason why I believe that, but yeah, you know, it's like, uh, he had to be basically a young fit male to mm -hmm. get them initially. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it, it makes no sense. And what's even funnier is that to some extent, it's a similar concept that homeopathy runs on. In it terms is. of, but homeopathy is quackery. So they, I, it, yeah, <laughs> you see I, what I'm saying? <laughs> it's homeopathy is, I, to be honest, I'm still undecided. <laughs> yeah, I've seen, I've seen it personally with sulfur specifically. I've seen it work gangbusters and it is difficult to get the right remedy mm. in homeopathy, but the uh, training is, is next to nil over here. You go to Germany and that's the first thing a doctor would give you. Yeah, Germany is really, yeah, they're... they're but, uh, you know, I'm not saying that it's the be-all and end-all and it's going to solve all your problems, but I leave the door open, let's put it that way. Right, it's a similar approach with me, definitely. <laughs> yeah, so um, actually, we have a couple of questions. We should probably ra wrap this up soon. So we have a couple of questions, and they're actually kind of... Two of them are kind of similar. One of them I'm going to leave off for now, but <laughs> the other one question, and it's kind of in the same vein of what we've discussed before. Okay, so uh, Nicola asks, is there something like an agenda out there to shift trends every couple of years on what's healthy and what's not? I think it all just it all just repeats itself. One study comes out, shows bread doesn't make you fat, then a month after another one debunks it. Is it all just a reason to give researchers a reason for a paycheck? And then <laughs> There's layers to this answer. I know, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, interestingly enough, there's obviously different industries involved. So, you have the food industry. That's, that's the, the product supplier. Uh, they fund, you know, once again, food industry or food, you know, agro science, quote unquote, or whatever, uh, will fund their own studies to show that their food is valuable, healthy, or, or whatever. Uh, so those studies are, you know, typically pushed to media outlets, and that's that's content to distribute through news and media outlets. Uh, and, and that's what's called peer review, by the way, folks. <laughs> yeah. Peer yeah. review is we did our own study and then we showed it to somebody who's on yeah. the board of the thing, but used to be on our board and now we're, yeah. we got it passed. Yeah, now, it's, now it's serious stuff. The CEO of Twinkies, breaking news, the CEO of Twinkies comes out with his own scientific study proving that Twinkies are healthy. And look at how thin he is now. He's just like Jared from Subway, who happens to be a child pedophile, by the way. Yeah, I'm not uh, saying there's a connection, but you know. <laughs> those, those chemicals Watch how many Subway know. sandwiches you eat. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I got my eye on you. <laughs> the, you the look like you could put away chemical. a couple sandwiches. <laughs> The yoga mat chemical in the bread that Subway serves is, oh, yes. is, 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 mm. is risky. Be careful. Uh, no, but so, so there's the food industry that funds their studies and, and, you know, get, has their, their PR push that to media outlets and, and get, get the word out, quote unquote, uh, whatever that means. And then, uh, in terms of media and press, with media and press, it's just all about viewership and audience retention. So uh, that's why you see fear. That's why you see death. That's why you see uh, disaster. That's why, that's why there's all these fear hooks to bring you in because typically fear is a better hook than love. Uh, love is a hard sell. They really have to have a heartfelt news anchor in order to sell love. And sometimes you do see a news anchor get choked up on air 
and that gets a lot of viewers. Uh, it rarely happens because 80% of the time they're trying to hook you in with fear. Uh, so those positive stories are just intermission stories. I'm sure they're paid something to, you know, share this story about whatever. Uh, but then debunking those things uh, gets viewers back in. So I see it as food, food industry and, and food, quote unquote, science, whatever that means, once again, you know, selling their product. It's a it's a marketing strategy. And then I see the, the PR industry and, and news as their strategy to make money off both ends, if you will. Yeah. Uh, so once again, diet comes back to the individual. What works for you? What's healthy? What's you know, is it a whole food? Is it organic? Is it local? Is it seasonal? Uh, does it work with your body? Well, do, do you react to it? Do you gain weight from it? Do you, you know, does your skin break out to it? Do you get inflammation from it? Whatever it may be. So it all comes back to the individual at the end of the day. And it, it's, I, I have a huge opt out mentality. So uh, I don't even watch the news. I, I opt out of a lot of a lot of things. I actually use that. That's my verb. I just opt out. Uh, so whether it's TSA or you know whatever, I, I just opt out and I kind of live my own path. You know, it's it's my path, my life, and uh, I, I think that's important. Like you said earlier, uh, the the you know people that are kind of promoting their their you know fruitarian or whatever it may be diet choices. Uh, they're typically regurgitating someone else's path, someone else's belief system, and they, they haven't found their own yet. And that's why they're so strong and angry and relentless about their beliefs because they haven't found their own truth yet. So they have to sell themselves well enough on their own belief for themselves to believe it, to get it out there in order to feel sane every day, because what they're doing mm. is absolutely insane. Mm. And they D- don't just fighting words. <laughs> <laughs> did you did so, you listen to to my interview with Lee Air Keith? Uh I did not, but I want to hear it. Now. Yeah, it's it's a really good one. She just she just rips into the whole thing and she talks about the pepper pie in her face, uh you know, her um because she was vegan for 22 years and then she is now paleo and uh she wrote a book called The Vegetarian Myth and a group of vegans went to a bookstore where she was doing a signing in Southern California and shoved a pepper pie in her face. Wow. Yeah. Great. And, uh, yeah, this is the, this is the, the loving society that, that we're trying to get to. I believe right. the preferred nomenclature is vegan. You know, I've heard that, it's, <laughs> but it's so vague. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's multiple people uh, that have gone from vegan to non-vegan. Uh, and Chris been attacked, Carr. right? Yeah, and have been attacked. Chris Carr. Uh, oh, she's eating meat again? She's, I believe, as far as I know, she's eating meat. Because uh, I, I, knew, I, I, I shouldn't say this on the air, but I know somebody who worked with her and she was apparently a big candy addict (laughs) (laughs) while while selling the vegan diet right Uh, well i eat chocolate but it's no like no like no i mean in place of food like as as meals (laughs) like like bowl of candy for lunch (laughs) well if you're vegan long enough you probably have I don't know, low blood sugar levels because you don't have protein in your diet. So maybe candy's a, I don't know. Well, I, I, don't know. I think that, I think in some cases when it becomes so unpalatable because it's so dry and lacking salt and everything else, yeah, uh, I think the, yeah. you, you make excuses. Yeah. Oh, I'll just have yeah. one bag. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Well, so, I, I think I, as far as I know, because I heard on, on an interview, she, I believe, eats meat now. And then also cool. Kevin Gianni, he used to be a vegan and now he I know he eats meat now. So and then there's been multiple people who have gone vegan and then kind of like come back from the dead or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> well, and, it's, and it, but I give yeah. I give them credit, though, especially if they yeah. it, I, for all intents and purposes have been making their money by yeah. selling vegan and then they have to come out about it. Um, Morgan Spurlock's ex-wife, what's her name? Alexandria Spurlock? I don't know what's, what her last name is. <laughs> but yeah, she 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 came out uh, after a year of, of not being vegan. Uh, she had come out and she just got so much um, hate mail and go away, die. We don't see you anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like a yeah. vicious community. They're all hungry yeah it's they, 
That's a valid point. You know you <laughs> <laughs> hungry for attention. Yeah. Yeah. No, there, there is. I, I do believe hungry there are some people meat. who start that. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Subconsciously hungry for meat. Yeah. 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 So, uh, that, yeah. It will level things out. I tell you. Yeah. And, and you know, and for me, it's it's interesting too because I think if you go back and if you and I really like to, I, I really admire and respect. Uh, Native Americans and, and the indigenous cultures. So if you look at Native American indigenous cultures, tribal cultures around the world, they respected the animals that they killed before they ate them. So typically when they killed mm-hmm. them, they would pray for it. They would honor it. They would, re- they would appreciate its life. And have it's gratitude. called grace. It, yeah. It's <laughs> no, nobody grace. says grace anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm a firm believer that, you know, like praying for your food, being grateful for your food and appreciating that and appreciating the life of the animal that you're eating is honoring. It's honoring the death. It's honoring the life of the animal. And I think that's okay. I think, I think a lot of the vegan community get, gets caught up in. Uh, you know, you're just killing animals, you're a vicious killer, whatever. Uh, but life has a life cycle. Life has a right. life and death cycle. We're all going to die. We're all going to live for a period of time. And just because an animal dies doesn't mean, you know, you're, you're an evil murderer. It means that's part of the system. It's part of the ecosystem. And as long as you honor that and respect that, uh, you're, you're not the asshole that's, you know, creating, you know, putting animals into cages and, and then, you know, pumping hormones right. into that and making it into quote unquote McDonald's you know, cheeseburgers or whatever. So it's a different relationship and understanding, but I think honoring and respecting your food and the animal and being grateful and saying grace and things like that is it's important because it's, it's energetically uh, aligning with your food before you eat it. And there's a lot of things you can do mm-hmm. before you eat your food For too, sure. like uh, taking deep breaths just to get mm-hmm. your body into a, uh, uh, into a relaxed uh, state and calming your nervous system uh, and actually improves your digestion as well. Um, you know, being grateful for your food. So, you know, there's a lot of things you can do to, to not, that not only helps you, but it helps your, your relationship with your food to benefit from that food, uh, at a digestive level and at an energetic level. So it's all about just getting to know your food again. It's all yeah. about. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and there's, um, I don't even know what I'm going to say. Uh, there, there, you, you, you touched on so many different things. I'm just going to, Move on to the next question. Angela asks, <laughs> she's curious to hear some info regarding women's hormone health and how do we go about sorting the right info without being forced into taking medication and knowing which alternatives are correct? So many conflicting opinions. Food is the main part of health, but extra minerals, nutrients, and supplements are needed without being forbidden. And how do we sort through the different seeds of advice? So then I asked her what she meant by that because I was a little bit confused and her reply was more like, how do we aid our own healing uh, regarding hormone imbalances without taking medications uh, and trusting the resources that we read regarding this taking natural medicine, eat this kind of food. Right. So, so many people give advice. How do we decipher what is correct? And by forbidden, mm-hmm. I mean looked down upon from the allopathic community. Doctors want us to take hormones, but we should be able to do it naturally. Does mm-hmm. that, does that make sense? Totally, it's a great question too. Hormones are interesting. They're they are uh, they're, they're information. So what what I find interesting about hormones is they're they're chemical messengers. So they're they they are information that that uh, tells the body what to do. Uh, so the interesting thing about hormones that differs from uh, vitamins or minerals or things like that is hormones play a connecting role uh, in between the different areas of health. So diet plays a role, stress plays a role, sleep plays a role, uh, lighting, artificial lighting, sunlight, all these different things play a role in hormones. Uh, so the, 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 it's, a more, it's a more intricate uh, journey into balancing and, and harmonizing your hormones and, and hormonal health. Uh, so I would just say, do your research and understand what influences hormones negatively and what influences hormones positively and do your best to start to let go of and get rid of things that influence hormones negatively. Uh, for example, using less plastic, not eating with plastic, not drinking from plastic, it mimics estrogen in the body, uh, with lighting, uh, artificial lighting at night is uh, when the light photons hit your eyes, your, your body's serotonin, melatonin production gets, uh, is off. And then your sleep cycles are off and then your hormones off because of that. So 
sleep with sleep with uh, the dark and rise with the sun. Uh, that's a big thing with hormones. Uh, exercise is huge. Uh, that plays a role as well. Uh, you can actually, and this is something that's huge too. People don't typically talk about this, but you can actually negatively influence your hormones by exercising too much. And you, I know. I keep telling huge. people that. And, and people they don't, don't talk about it. it. Nobody like, Come on. freaking talks about you, it. You can literally cause your body to be hormonally imbalanced and store more fat by exercising too much. You can literally. You know how many fat people I know run every day? <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. I know a lot so, of people and they just so, keep gaining weight. They're like, I don't know. I think I have to yeah. run more. I'm like, you're running too I, damn much. I know. That's the, I have a friend that I've, yeah, it's exact. So it's, it's, it, hormones really come down to harmony. And I love that word for mm, it. Yeah. Because it's, so they should be hormones. Hormones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll put a little musical tones in there and call, call it hormones and make yeah. a jingle about it or something. See, now if we were <laughs> if we were savvy like some other people, we'd just make money on this. <laughs> I need take to your, step my savvy your- game up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but yeah, so a lot of things play into it. Diet, exercise. And sleep, vitamin D. Lighting and we, vitamin D. We thing. need that sunlight. Huge. The, the yeah. master hormone is vitamin D. Definitely, definitely. And then, and then, yeah, it's vitamin D and the cofactors that go along with that as well, magnesium right. and all these other things. Absolutely. Um, so it, I, with hormones, it's just a learning process. Do your research, understand that it's more than diet, it's exercise, it's lighting. And, and then also there, there's hormone, hormone suppressants. So understand what suppresses hormones. Once again, BPA, bisphenol A and plastic suppresses, uh, or well, it mimics estrogen. Uh, but then there's also other chemicals and pollutants and things, maybe in uh, hair care, skin care, uh, deodorant or of an array or variety of products you could be using topically or in your home, sprays, cleaners, whatever it may be, that will influence your hormones. Because what it, you can literally smell something and, that, and that'll, or inhale or it, something that will influence your hormones as well. So a lot, hormones, it's a, it's a harmonizing, it's a harmonizing game. And just understanding that it covers all of those areas uh, is really important. So do your research in each of those areas and then just make a little, being healthy, feeling healthy, feeling great, uh, and preventing disease and all these types of things that we want to do to be and feel great. They all are just little baby steps each day. So each day, do something little for your diet, do something little for your exercise, just make little improvements. It's a Japanese philosophy, Kaizen, constant right. and never ending improvement. If you just take little steps each day, you don't have to be on medications, you don't have to be on drugs. And each day, those hormones will be a little bit more balanced, a little bit more harmonized. You'll sleep better, you'll feel better, your energy levels will be there when they need to be. And your hormones will work for you instead of against you, which is typically uh, what happens when hormones are imbalanced and out of whack. So right. And so you're saying uh, lifestyle and diet, yeah. working together uh, are exactly. the best thing that sh- that she could do if if she's particularly worried or concerned or doctor is trying to force her to take something and the other thing is you can find a doctor sometimes even just a regular old md do who will support you and has gone on to do more training actually a lot of the people uh who are supporting the types of things that david and i have been talking about uh they have uh the, you know they started out in the allopathic community and then they realized it didn't go far enough so they had to educate yeah. themselves because they wanted to help actually help their uh patients instead of just making a prescription every time they, they would come in and find out that they were still going through the same stuff so uh what i would say as w- add to that as well is to be aware of where those messages are coming from uh mm-hmm. is there you might pick up a natural magazine let's say at the health food store and the ads facing the article written on a particular item is is your magic solution you know it's the the article was specifically written to promote the ad facing the page Mm -hmm. uh so just to be aware of where some of those messages come from and that again what we've been talking about the, the entire hour is just that our doctors they're not gods they they are they're fallible <laughs> is does fallible exist i know infallible exists but you know they <laughs> but you know they they have they have their problems too they they, they can't yeah. solve everything and they're they're human they they 
can't possibly uh, take in all the information. But the more a doctor is not open to listening to you and to understanding that, yes, you're actually doing what they said and it's not helping or that. Uh, that's what, a bad sign. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a bad sign. That's, 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 that's bad feedback. That is change your doctor now because yeah. when you really need someone, you you want somebody who's going to be by you and you need somebody who really is going to investigate. And that's one of the things that I loved about my doctor back in Pennsylvania. I would find something. Sometimes I would find them in old textbooks that my mom had lying around the house or, or what have you. And I tell him about it and he'd take notes. He'd be mm-hmm. like, Oh, that worked for you. I'm going to keep that in mind. And he'd like actually write yeah. it down. And That's awesome. you know, that, did, how many doctors do that? Most yeah. of them, they'll, they'll say, Oh yeah, that's just a coincidence. Yeah. And it was well, that thing I gave you two years ago. That's just starting to kick in now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I've heard that. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, doctors, doctors are healthcare practitioners. Yeah. They are practicing medicine. The unfortunate fact is that some doctors have stopped practicing medicine and have just settled for what it is they know and they don't continue that education. So, uh, my mom is not even a doctor, but she helps people live a healthy lifestyle. And I think for me, that works for me. I don't have a doctor. I, I consult with people and I talk with people that can help me live a healthy lifestyle, but that works for me. So I I think just finding what works for you is really important. And if you do have a doctor, make sure they're practicing medicine and they're not inactive practitioners. That's huge. (laughs) Yeah, it's, it's so true. There's, there's a lot of that going on around. Mm -hmm. Uh, So uh, David, on that note, do you have anything else you'd like to share with us? Not specific. Well, one thing specifically, and I know, and I want to thank you, while we're on this call uh, for uh, the truth about cancer is coming out soon. I know you're going to share that with your audience. Yes, I have. Uh, I watched it last fall. It was absolutely amazing. I watched all episodes last fall. There's nine more coming up next month. Uh, Whoever's listening, watch that series. You're going to learn a lot from it. It's free to watch and it's extremely valuable. So check that out. And uh, that's pretty much it. You can find me and my work at healthywildandfree.com. Thank you so much for spending this time with us. I think I think everybody learned a lot from a from a young whippersnapper yeah. like you. <laughs> now Max has to go get his uh, pizza rolls on. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, just to uh, read, oh, they're organic. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fix them up with something. Uh, <laughs> I got some. I got some. I uh, see. I can make a real pizza. I can. I can make a pizza like nobody's business. So uh, anyway, uh, when, the, when I come to Hawaii, I'm coming. To your house. You better. Uh, I'll make the coffee. Yeah, he'll make the coffee. Wait, where was where's my coffee? <laughs> Wait a minute. I just realized he showed up empty handed. <laughs> I'll bring the chocolate. We'll have chocolate coffee and pizza. Mm, a oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. It's on now. Okay. So the URL where you can find me in this episode of uh, the Nutrition Heretic podcast uh, with David Benjamin is at nutritionheretic.com. David, thank you so much again for being on the show, and I hope to have you back. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. I'd love to be back, and I'd love to have you on my show as well. Woohoo! So once I start back up again, it's been a while, so I need to start back up. Fantastic. Looking forward to it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have All a great right. One. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye. The Nutrition Heretic Podcast is a production of Savor the Journey, LLC. Our audio editor is Nikola Popovich. Our podcast manager is Crystal McLean, and our operations manager is Linda Hansen. I'm your host, Adrian Hugh, the Nutrition Heretic. You can find us at nutritionheretic.com, where you can download the Nutrition Heretic's free shit list of seven health foods to avoid like the plague. You can also listen to previous episodes at nutritionheretic.com slash podcast. Be sure to like us on social media for updates. Our Facebook page is facebook.com slash nutritionheretic and on Twitter at NutriHeretic. Contact us with show ideas, questions, or if you just want to be a guest. And don't forget to rate our podcast on iTunes and Stitcher. Thanks. Thanks.